Today I'm going to take you through how we do a craniotomy and that's making a hole or a flap in the skull and taking that bit of skull off so we can access the brain underneath. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe, come and join me in the operating theatre and I'm going to take you through a craniotomy. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to do a craniotomy with all the tools that we usually use in the neurosurgical operating theatre. This is geared towards the public and to patients to learn more about what a craniotomy is and how we do it, but junior neurosurgeons can also use it because I'll be covering a couple of little pearls and technical tips that'll really help you get through the first few times that you want to use these tools. So a craniotomy is when we make a cut in the skull and remove a flap of bone so that we can access the brain underneath. Once our business with the brain is done, that bone is usually placed back on and secured in place with little titanium plates and screws. I'm going to show you how we use a perforator and the perforator is what we use to make a hole in the skull. I'm going to show you how we use a craniotome and that's connecting those holes so that we can make a large flap of skull and take that off. This is a sterile set that the scrub nurse usually puts together for the surgeon and it's got all the little bits that we'll, uh, that we'll be using for this craniotomy. That's your perforator handle that plugs into this wire of this electrical system that's not driven by air but by electricity. Make sure everything is clipped firmly in place and pop your foot on the foot pedal before you start. Make sure everything's turning nicely. You can pop these burr holes in lots of different places and this video isn't to show you where but how. Using one hand is relatively unstable so always try and fix your hand down in place or support it with your other hand. That'll stop you from sliding. When you're drilling, there's a clutch system that detects pressure changes uh, in the drill bits that means that you shouldn't plunge directly into the brain. Should it fail, which is really unlikely, your other hand is going to stop that drill from plunging into the brain. You need to make sure before you start that you are perpendicular to the bone, not angled off in one direction or another. Otherwise, the burr hole won't be adequate and you won't be able to get your craniotome underneath. So take a bit of time and make sure that your burr hole is just right. This is a craniotome bead that we're going to fit into this foot plate here. And if you turn it upside down, it looks like a foot, hence the name. That foot plate is to strip the dura off of the underside of the bone and the dura is a leathery covering over the brain. You angle it back and it makes sure you're not tearing the dura. If you pop the foot plate in the burr hole, you can make sure that the dura is uh, untethered from the inside of the skull and that just gives you a little bit of leeway. When you're fixing these together, make sure that everything is locked together nicely. You don't want this to come apart whilst you're drilling. The handle rotates, letting you follow different curves and following your way around the skull. Here you can see that we're going to connect the burr holes. We're leaning back ever so slightly so that we're cutting up and away from the dura. Control the foot plate as it comes out of the burr hole. Uh, the next burr hole shows you what happens when you don't control it. So we're going to use the craniotome, come round, and if we don't control things, you can see that it will just suddenly come out and you can catch things in, in the blade like your finger, for example, or your attending or consultant's finger. This just shows that when we're operating near to the midline, where there's the superior sagittal sinus, which is a big venous lake of blood, you want to be a couple of centimeters away because damage to that sinus can uh, be very difficult to repair and in some instances prove fatal. And we're just going along the edge of the sinus. This is just to show that as you're coming round over contours uh, like this, 
the craniotome can get a little stuck and it's important not to try and force things but just change your angle give the blade a wiggle a little bit and it should be nice and smooth without you putting too much force through it and as you come down through these angles especially around the sphenoid ridge which is a big um, buttress of bone you just need to be careful that you've got the angle right and alter the angle as the case may be watch the left hand you put your hand on the bone flap so that if you make a mistake or it jumps it doesn't fall on the floor peeling the bone off of the dura is usually done with a couple of metal instruments called adds some smooth elevators in this case i only had my fingers but this is the kind of thing that you do with those metal instruments always keeping a hand or an assistant's hand near the bone flap in case it drops and you just want to peel that dura off of the bone and make sure you're not ripping it sometimes it is unavoidable though if you have some general questions about craniotomies like the risks recovery and all sorts of other little questions that you may have especially if your patients that have had them feel free to ask them in the comments section down below or if you're following us on twitter and instagram you can pop your questions on there too and i'll do my best to answer them